The English FA have made Thomas Tuchel England's national team coach. Some English people disagree with this appointment, where some are thrilled. But regardless of the fans' opinions, he has inherited a great burden. Already, Tuchel has to deal with the media, who are not completely on board with his appointment either, but that's not his great burden. The FA has given Tuchel an 18-month contract and the target of winning the World Cup. England have only won it once in their 150-year history as a national team. However, Tuchel has the tools to be able to achieve this. He has a 57% win percentage in his career so far and an incredible record in knockout tournaments. Also, this England team is one of the best in the world. They've got Harry Kane, Bukayo Saka, Jude Bellingham and Cole Palmer, to name just a few. England have got the talent and now maybe they've got their missing piece in Thomas Tuchel. England are looking like a scary side, as usual, but if Tuchel wants to succeed, there are a few kinks he has to iron out. After losing the Euro 2024 final to Spain, Gareth Southgate decided to resign his position as England's head coach. Southgate had been criticised all throughout the competition for his conservative approach and how England couldn't always control games despite their wealth of talent. They barely scraped by and fans do think they got to the final due to luck. And of course, some individual brilliance from players such as Jude Bellingham against Slovakia and Oli Watkins against the Dutch. Now with that kind of background and England failing to win yet another final, Southgate, who was poised to renew his contract and take England to the World Cup, resigned his position. Southgate resigned with a record of taking England to the 2018 World Cup semi-finals, the 2020 Euros final, the 2022 World Cup quarter-finals and the 2024 Euros final, while having around a 60% win percentage. This is what Tuchel has to surpass. And the good thing is that he has proven himself as being able to do so by helping Chelsea win their second Champions League and Club World Cup. Tuchel began his career with Mainz after a short football career ruined by injury as he stopped playing when he was 25 and started his managerial career in 2000. At Mainz, he was revolutionary with his manner of coaching, which was very fluid and pragmatic. Wanting to get the best from his players, he devised training methods that allowed them to play to his instructions. One time, when he didn't want his players to play through the wings because he wanted to exploit an opponent's weakness, he designed the training pitch to reflect exactly how he wanted his team to play. It was bizarre, but it worked for him, as he helped a struggling Mainz achieve consecutive top 10 Bundesliga finishes. This is the revolutionary mind that England has hired, but his bizarre approach is also his weakness. Eh, we'll get to that later. Tuchel left Mainz, and he did so much that he left with the popularity of the guy that overachieved with a team that didn't have much resources. Borussia Dortmund hired him because of that image, and with the expectation that he would help them finish above Bayern Munich. In his two seasons with them, he finished 10 points and 18 points off the summit of the table, but did manage to win them the DFB Pokal. The weight of replacing Jurgen Klopp was ultimately too much and, among other things, led to Tuchel leaving. However, one man is seemingly replacing Jurgen Klopp very well. Click here for more on Arne Slot's Liverpool this season. Tuchel took his trade to PSG and he was great for them and it allowed him to show his ability as a man-manager. Keeping the egos of players like Neymar, Messi and Mbappe in check is no easy feat and it is a trait that England inevitably will need now and in the coming years. One of the things that Southgate achieved for England when he became their head coach was squad harmony. Usually, English players were divided along club lines, like the golden generation players who are very open about this, such as John Terry, Jamie Carragher, Wayne Rooney. They've all openly said that there were huge cliques and groups at the England camps, and they revolved around the major competitiveness at club level. 
But during his time as manager, Southgate managed to squash all those beefs and made the players know that they aren't bigger than the team. At PSG, Tuchel achieved similar results and kept the squad in harmony. Even he revealed that at PSG, he didn't feel like a coach, but more a minister of sports. He helped PSG play as a unit and helped them to continue their domination of Ligue 1 and got them to the Champions League final in 2020 for the first time ever in their history. Then Tuchel left PSG with a similar theme to how he left Dortmund, but we'll get to that later on. Tuchel went to a hopeful Chelsea, and since then he has evolved due to the trophies he won with Dortmund and PSG. Tuchel then became a coach who focused on style and results. He could be pragmatic when it mattered, and it was this pragmatism that helped Chelsea through the Champions League with a near-perfect defensive record and winning their second Champions League trophy in their history. Chelsea also reached the FA Cup final twice and the League Cup final too, but lost in dramatic fashion. Tuchel did, however, help them win the Club World Cup and the Super Cup for the first time in Chelsea's history. Unfortunately, Tuchel left Chelsea in less than ideal circumstances when the new owners Clear Lake and Todd Bowley took over. After this, Tuchel went to Bayern in what was admittedly a disappointing spell. The club had sacked Julian Nagelsmann in a decision that stunned many, including the players in the club. Then they underwent a shake-up in their leadership that affected squad planning, which affected Bayern's performance. Unfortunately, just like in his last three jobs, Tuchel had the same problems. He clashed with the club's hierarchy, and the theme was the same. He wanted certain kinds of players, which the clubs didn't provide for him. His ambition then gets the better of him, which affects his relationship with the hierarchy. Now, Tuchel doesn't like anything in football that doesn't involve training and devising tactics. When he was at Chelsea, he conflicted with the board because he didn't want them to be involved with transfers. At Bayern, he wanted a more defensive-minded midfielder, but the club was in disarray at the time. And this is exactly why the England job is great for him. He can just focus on football and do what he does best and use the players that he has and to try and get the best out of them. Speaking of those players, Harry Kane is certainly someone that will especially benefit from Tuchel becoming the New England boss. Kane joined Bayern when Tuchel was the coach and had an incredible goal-scoring season. He bagged 44 goals and had 12 assists in 45 appearances and subsequently was awarded the European Golden Boot. Unfortunately, he couldn't replicate his form for England at the 2024 Euros, and this has been a theme for Kane. Great for the club, but poor for England. But this is expected to change. Kane, after all, thrives in a team that loves to not only attack, but has more than one attacking outlet. He loves to drop deep and combine with wingers. And this is one of the reasons he had an incredible partnership with Song Hyun Min. Under Southgate, England played conservatively, which meant Kane was isolated up front. He dropped deeper and deeper than usual, but no one was running ahead of him. This will surely change under Tuchel, who would likely play a uh, 3-4-3 as he did at Chelsea, or a uh, 4-2-3-1. Tuchel is a coach that believes in building a solid defence while also playing an attacking style of football, which encourages players to keep possession. This means Kane would get the service he wants, and once he drops deep to help the team in possession, he would have players who would run into the space that he would be leaving. Tuchel has other talents in England that would fit the way he wants to play. Jude Bellingham, who's been high-flying for Madrid, could play as an attacking midfielder for Tuchel, who will value his ability to attack spaces. Bellingham made his name in Real Madrid by attacking spaces in the box to score. However, he's more than just an attacking spaces and scoring player. Bellingham has a good passing range and can create chances. He's also stubborn, energetic, and has a breathtaking work rate. He pairs well with Kane as he would enter the spaces Kane vacates and wait on the end of chances, which could come from England's wingers like Bukayo Saka, who has been a key player for both Arsenal and England over the years. Saka is skilled in 1v1 scenarios and is always looking to attack and also contribute to the defence. 
In Tuchel's setup, Saka would be encouraged to cut inside to pass or score like he is at Arsenal. At Chelsea, Tuchel used his wing-backs to stretch the play, which will suit Saka as it would leave him unmarked in some cases. With that, Saka would become even more dangerous and do more damage. Rhys James has made a recovery from the injury he sustained early in the 24-25 season. Now, James was one of Chelsea's key players under Tuchel. He was a constant source of goals and assists and could be making his way back to England's squad if he can be fit till January when Tuchel will officially take over. Can James stay fit? James offers balance as he's good both offensively and defensively. Trent Alexander-Arnold is also great in attack but has shown a lack of defensive awareness that Tuchel needs in his players However, he is improving, although his attacking prowess makes a case for him to be a man under Tuchel regardless. A player who, for sure, will have an undisputed position in Tuchel's midfield is Declan Rice. Tuchel is a great admirer of the midfielder, and it's easy to see why. Rice might not be as good in build-up as Rodri, for example, but there are few better than him in box-to-box -box duties and driving the ball forward. Rice is a midfield powerhouse. And he also makes late runs into the box. Now, he might have Conor Gallagher to contend with for that position if Conor keeps up his performances for Atletico Madrid, especially as the two share traits. So depending on who plays, they may have a partner in the midfield who could be a wild card here, like Adam Wharton. So far, Wharton has shown that he is smart as a holding midfielder. He's like former Barcelona holding midfielder Sergio Busquets and even Jorginho in how he approaches a game. Tuchel likes a holding midfielder who's comfortable in possession and right now Wharton is one of England's finest in that regard. Kobi Mainu is at the heart of Man United's current squad and was great for England during the Euros to be fair. He solved the midfield problem of who can play next to Rice and is more established than Wharton right now. Tuchel will bring changes to how England play, as we have established, and he will boot some players from the team. One of them may even be Jordan Pickford. Tuchel will want to start playing from the back, and Pickford is known more as a shot stopper than a builder from the back. There would be many in contention to take his spot. Who do you think deserves it most? Some fans are saying that the English national team manager should be English. However, Tuchel is bringing a wealth of experience and his stature in big moments. And this is just what England need. So, bring it on, Thomas! <laughs>